So Jason, I don't know about you, but my favorite time of the year is coming up. June 22nd, Apple is holding its Worldwide Developer Conference. It happens each year, sometime in June. This year, it's online only, and that's when they announce the next version of iOS, iPadOS, and all the other software goodies. I'm Jason Cipriani with Jason Furlow, and today we're going to go through our wish list of what we want Apple to add to iOS and all the other software that runs Apple Gear. So Jason, I know you have a lot of thoughts and feelings about how the iPhone needs to improve. iOS 14, which is what we expect Apple to announce, is their next chance to do some of that work. What are you looking for? Well, you know, we're at iOS 14, so we are, you know, past well past 10 years, you know, yeah. of 12 years or something along those lines. Uh, you know, 2007 is when the iPhone was first released. So we are many generations into this thing now. Um, I think the, the operating system is, requires a complete, complete re ground up redesign um, in the same way that you know, Google is working on Fuchsia, complete OS replacement, completely wow. new apps, completely new everything. I think we need a complete ground up replacement. But in lieu of that, there's a lot of optimization that can occur because there's been so many features and things that have been added and it's hard to, you know, even as a, as a, as a seasoned, you know, experienced user with the platform, um, it can get overwhelming. Um, let's take a look at things like, uh, you know, organization, just simple organization of your apps, right? I mean, how many times have you lost <laughs> an iOS app, Jason? Yeah, yeah, it's I ridiculous. Have. I mean, you, you dump it in one of those, you know, groups and you forgot where it is. And then you keep, and it, let's say you want to delete it. Okay, you can go into storage and you can delete it. There's a way to do it that way. But if you, if you just want to take an icon, you want to move it around, you know, it, 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 what happens if it's, you don't know where you put it? It's ridiculous, right? Yeah. Or what about the settings apps? The settings is like nine levels of stuff down to, to find things. It's, 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 it's crazy now. It, 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 you can't, it, it's, it's starting to become kind of unmanageable. It's starting to look like my office. <laughs> I, would, I would agree with that statement, yeah. absolutely. Uh, for me, I, I think what I want in iOS 14 more than anything else after the horrible launch of iOS 13 is reliability, reliability, reliability. Yeah, I mean that, but yes. Yeah, it's like the Mail app on my phone and my iPad still does not work properly. I still get blank emails that come in that I can't do anything with. I still, if I search for something, my inbox fills up with all the results that I can't get rid of. I end up having to delete the mail app and reinstall it and reset up my email address just to fix it. it. It's a nightmare. And we're a year into, almost a year into iOS 13. So reliability is my main thing. But then I'm going to go back to the staples of what I always want in iOS updates. First one is home screen customization. Let me put my apps wherever I want. I don't need this fancy, neat grid. If I want to be messy, I'm old enough to make that decision. I'm an adult. Quit holding my hand, Apple. Let me arrange my apps however I want. The second thing is, let me set default apps. And I know this goes into one of your points and one of your items on the wish list with browser engines. If I want to use Chrome with the Chromium browser engine, let me do it. There's safe ways for you guys to implement that. Let's make it happen. It, it's about time. We're iOS 14. I don't need a grid of apps. Yep. Yep. But on the same note, um, I don't understand why this far into iOS and, and now iPads, right? We've had iPads since 2010, right? Why is it that I cannot synchronize the configuration between my iPad and my iPhone? Right. It should be that if, if I install an app on my iPhone, right, I should be able to, if, if it installs, it says, you also have an iPad. You want to install it on your iPad? Yes. You deleted this. Do you want to delete it on your iPad? Yes. Also, whatever, I buy an iPad, which is every, usually every year because I refresh. Not everybody does that, of course, right? Sure. Um, you can do a, you can restore an iPad from your iPhone configuration and load all your apps and data you should be able to do is constantly synchronize the two together if you want i'm not saying everybody's going to want that feature but this is a feature that a lot of people would want which is mirroring of your configuration your groups i mean how much time do you spend organizing groups on your iphone and then try to replicate the exact same thing on your ipad i do whenever i get a new ipad it takes hours and then i never get it 
exactly completely right when I compare the two, right? And so yeah. there are things that they can do. To, I, I, I see my, I, my iPad as my after hours device, but I still want everything where I can find it. You know, because you get a certain muscle memory to using these devices. Sure. That's what I'd like to see is, is complete, I, complete iCloud synchronization down to the folder and, and application level. You know, yeah, you I, really I see the that. appeal of that, but that's something I don't want. I use my iPad as a separate device than my iPhone. I use them completely different ways and they have completely different use cases for me. So I see the appeal of that. It would have to be opt-in, not opt-out. Right really annoying to have something like that happen for those who don't want it. Yeah. And the, the other thing that I would like to see uh, and, and things that we don't currently have as major features now, I mean, these, what we've been talking about is more like optimization type of things, right? You know, clean up and easier organization. Um, I would like to be able to unlock my Macintosh just as I can do that with my, my watch. Right. right? Which is a slight like integration. I would like to be able to do this with my iPhone. Right? I'd be able to come up to my 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 my, my Mac, walk into a room with my Mac, uh, you know, pick up Face ID, bang, my 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 Mac is unlocked. Or if I have an SE, do it with Touch ID because I have my Mac is plugged into uh, my monitors. It's that it's closed, so I can't use its Touch ID sensor to unlock it. So that's that's kind of impractical, right? But for those of us who have desktop Macs, right? There are other desktop Macs. There's Mac Minis. There's Mac Pros. That, that would be a worthwhile feature uh, to have. The other uh, feature I would like to be able to see, and I don't know why it would be difficult to implement because they're almost exactly the same operating system they run the same basic binaries and libraries, is to be able to use your, your iPhone using the Apple Watch interface, right? You should be able to have a virtual Apple Watch on the lock screen, which would be cool with, with, with complications and all the other things, as long as they're, those things are, I'm not saying you could do an ECG on your iPhone, right? You can't, <laughs> right, it right. that sensor. But it, they do have a lot of things um, in common. And I'd like to be able to see the, uh, the, the Apple Watch interface, the grid, um, uh, usable as a single hand uh, user interface if you want it. Yeah, I, and, and that goes kind of hand in hand with my suggestion of a customizable home screen. I think yep. if you expand the Apple Watch interface to something that works on the iPhone, that's an interesting way for Apple to approach that instead of sticking to the grid that they have now. So I'm fully on board with that, even if it is just a single hand mode, like you said, or something that's more permanent as in a whole new way to treat the home screen. And you know, one thing we haven't even touched on is widgets. I, I still want widgets. I, I Apparently think they're, they're coming though. We've seen screenshots or, or mock-ups. Yeah, there's been a couple leaks with code that maybe they're coming, maybe they're not. But until, I guess this year, they're not standing on stage announcing something. They're playing a video and announcing something since it's a completely remote and digital event. Until they hit play on that video and announce it, you know, we don't truly know what's coming. Yep. Um, so let's move on to iPad, Jason. I know you really want system mirroring, which I do is great, but I think there's a lot of improvements that they can make for iPad OS going forward. They recently added trackpad support. And while it's a good first iteration, I think it can be improved. Um, whether it's making the gestures e easier to discover or just the whole interaction model itself. But one thing that I do want them to do, you know, they rolled out Magic Keyboard, which is the yep. new iPad Pro keyboard that has a trackpad built into it, but it's missing something. It's missing function keys at the top of the keyboard, which are, you know, take a screenshot, play media, uh, change the volume, do, do those common tasks, just like you have on your Mac keyboard. Give us some keyboard shortcuts that allow us to do that on the Magic Keyboard or any other third-party keyboard for that matter. Some, not all of them have you know, multimedia keys or system shortcuts. I would also like to see the Terminal app added. I do a lot in Terminal on my Mac. There are some SSH apps that you can use yeah. on iPad to get into like Raspberry Pis and update and program and stuff. But having Terminal built in directly to the iPad OS would be a huge boost and it would save me a ton of time and a ton of headaches. Um, another one is multiple users. Why don't we have this yet? You know, yeah. Apple's classroom uh, implementation for the iPad allows for multiple users. They have the code, they have the underlying base code to make this happen. Why can't I share an iPad Pro with my wife and kids in the same house? The Fire HD 8 tablets have multi-user support. You should be able to lock down a child's configuration, you know, and say this is the apps that this person's allowed to use, et cetera. Exactly. I mean, absolutely. 
Exactly. It, it, I mean, a hundred dollar tablet in the Fire HD8 has multi-user support. Why doesn't my thousand dollar iPad Pro have that support? It's time. We need it. Uh, the other thing I want to see is better external display support. Right now, if you hook up a display to the iPad Pro uh, via the USB-C port, it mirrors exactly what's on your screen. So you have your iPad screen and your monitor look identical. It, there's no point in doing that. It, I'll just use my iPad screen instead. Let it act as a second display, make it more of a desktop-like interface right. you have to with your home screen redesign. Because remember, iOS and iPadOS still share a ton of code. So any changes they make to the iPhone are gonna carry over, but there are iPad-specific changes they can make as well. Um, and let's see, what else? The Files app is great, yeah. but it, it leaves a lot to be desired. I don't know if you've messed around with it at all, Jason, but there's just, there's so many nuances and little caveats and what you can and cannot do in the Files app. It, it's frustrating at times. Yeah, I don't use my iPad as a desktop replacement type of tool um, at all, um, but I have played with the, the Files app, and I do see that it is definitely not anywhere near as good as the Files stuff on the Macintosh. I mean, I'm surprised they just didn't do a direct port and say, here you go, you know, that would have been fine, you know, for a first generation iteration. Um, but what they have now is severely limited. Um, I, I agree that the, the desire to make an iPad into a desktop replacement, I think, is an important thing. Um, for Apple, although what we're hearing is there may be more that the next generation of Macs are going to have in common with iPads than we think, right? Um, which we'll probably hear about at WWDC. Um, but one of the things I think has been missing from iOS um, and now iPad OS, right, is the ability to have what we call uh, application scaling, you know, uh, which which we have in Android as fluent design. Okay, that's when you have an application that's been written for a smartphone and is able to scale properly its interface to a tablet, right? Um, and that's something that they've, they've spent a lot of time on, even though, you know, Android tablets are not that popular, you know, yeah. compared to iPads, but they right. did the work to do that, right? So uh, we don't have a, a f an Apple fluency. Right, which is to say, and the, and some of the re, and some of the you know the the deficiencies that we have in some iPad applications are due to the fact that some developers have to maintain a separate code base for iOS and iPad OS. One of the most glaring examples of that is the Facebook application um, for iPad, which is which is junk compared <laughs> to the iPhone yeah. uh, version. Now, Apple, interestingly enough, has had something called universal binaries. For years, at least five years, they've had universal binary, which is to say you get to run, you get to create one application binary, which has the, the code differences in it for both the API code differences in it for when it runs on an, on an iPhone or whether it runs on an iPad. And, and, right. and, you know, and, and depending on which platform it runs on, it does A or B, right? Or it, it makes certain UX changes or what have you. And it's distributed as a single file to the App Store, right? Um, that's not the case with a lot of developers. A lot of developers literally distribute different binaries, right, for iPhone and iPad, and they 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 they're not necessarily on the same development track, and they, and there's features lacking between the iPad version uh, and the iPhone version. Um, in in uh, Instagram's case, there is no <laughs> iPad app. Yeah, they didn't even bother to make a universal binary that does even basic scaling. Yeah. It's on an really iPad. Really it literally is the same app. iPhone app that just you got to blow up and it looks like crap yeah. on an iPad, right? I think that's like the biggest call of the last, I don't know, five years or whatever is Instagram to release an iPad app. They have it. You can do everything on the desktop, nearly everything on the desktop. You have, of course, the mobile app. Where's the iPad app? Why not? Yeah. So yeah, so Apple Fluent, does, an equivalent to Apple Fluent design, I think is, is long overdue and forcing developers into, into, into universal binaries that, you know, would have to, would have to be part of that effort. I mean, they already do API forcing people to do things in the app store, you know, over a certain time. They say, if you don't do this, then your app is out. Right. Yeah. They, they should have, they should do that. I mean, if I they would, care much about iPad as they do, they really should, they really should be, they should be doing that. I get that. I get, I get that sentiment. I just think it creates a lot of work for developers unless they do a, a the fluent stuff right 
you know, and, and it's right. able to do it without a lot of interface changes on their end. But then the other factor you have to consider about this is with Project Catalyst, which allows iPad apps to come to the Mac and run on the Mac as they would, you know, on yeah. an iPad. If you're requiring them to release universal binaries for iPhone and iPad, well, now you're also requiring that app to work on the Mac. So yep. it, it's doubling, if not tripling, the work for a developer in the current state. There would have to be a lot of uh, work in the uh, Developer assistant tools, you know, you know things that the code evaluation yeah. tools. I mean, these, those things do exist. I mean, I mean, they're going to have to do a lot of that stuff, especially if we start looking at our major architectural changes in the Macintosh, right? right which we think are going to happen. So it's possible. It's certainly possible. Um, I've seen other companies, I mean, Microsoft went through that entire process, you know, of, de of decoupling APIs for, for mobile platforms. Um, not to say that Microsoft was successful in promoting those platforms, but they did do all the SimSystems architecture work on the developer side to make those things happen, right? So it's, 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 a, it's a level of effort. I agree it's a level of effort, but we're, we're talking about iPad is, is really Apple's future platform for the most part. So. It's at least leading the way in that regard. Yeah. Absolutely. I know you're a huge fan of your Apple Watch. Yes. And we expect Watch OS, I guess we're on seven now, uh, yep. to be announced. I personally do not have any major changes I want to see made to the watch other than new health features added. Uh, whether that is more stuff like the ECG, which is, I get is hardware dependent, but they also released the, the hearing uh, monitoring software update yep. last year, which lets you know if you're in a, an environment for too long that's too loud, you're gonna have an impact on, it's gonna have an impact on your hearing. So more features like that. There is some speculation that the Apple Watch all the way back to series one has a pulse ox sensor in it, but they have yet to get FDA approval to activate it, which tells you your blood oxygen level. Yep. A hugely, vastly important bit of information right now with COVID-19 is your blood oxygen level. So, you know, push, keep pushing Apple, get that approval, do whatever it is you need to do to activate it if it truly is there. But for me, I just wanna see more health features. I don't really care about a third party Apple Watch face store or stuff like that. That, that doesn't appeal to me. The, the complications are more than enough for me. Um, I don't know what you think. Um, you know what it is? I, I don't have any major requests as far as user interface or anything like that. I, I agree with you. More sensors, more better, right? <laughs> right. You, know, you, want, you want pulse ox? I'm totally on board with pulse ox. Yeah. If, if the sensors um, are truly there, let us use it. Yeah. I mean, there, there are other types of sensors that we can do. Um, you know, uh, the sky's the limit in terms of, of the types of sensors, right, that, that can be enabled. Um, there may be some user interface optimizations that can be done to get to certain features faster. Um, but, you know, again, I, 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 I agree simplicity is best when it comes to user interface, when it comes to something like a watch. Yeah. And, and the way it is now to me is, is just enough. It doesn't do too much, it, you know. So I, like I said, I don't care about too many tweaks to watch OS. Just add more health features, fall detection, stuff like that, stuff in that vein. Uh, just keep pushing forward on that. Now, Apple TV, we'll also see an update to tvOS. I haven't used tvOS as my main streaming platform for a while now, um, but going back and thinking about the current version, I, it, it worked. It's the same kind of like Apple Watch. It, it worked. If it's not broke, why well, try to fix it? You know, I, I don't have any, um, any suggestions for tvOS. What about you? I don't even have an Apple TV currently. I, I think the last time I had one was about three, three years ago, maybe four. Okay. But, uh, so, but I want one because, uh, you know, HBO Max uh, is something I was recently given rights to. Uh, and I'd like to be able to enable that. And you can't do that on a Roku. Or Fire TV. Uh, or Fire TV. Right. So right now, if you want to watch HBO Max, you've got to have an iPad or an iPhone essentially, or, 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 or an Android device. So, um, and I don't even think any of the Google platforms uh, can do it. The TV platforms can do it. Um, I think the, the Xbox can, and I think the, the PlayStation can, but I don't, I don't currently have one of those hooked up. Um, my main beef with, with tvOS isn't so much the, the operating system or the user interface. Um, my issue is hardware with, 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 with Apple TV. I think we need 
a faster, more powerful, uh, you know, A13 based uh, device. Yeah. And I would like to see a controller that doesn't suck. And I'm going to mean television controller, number one, something like this and some little gum stick thing that you lose and, it, you know, it falls <laughs> in, in the... Yeah, I lose that thing so much. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I know, I know people that have Velcroed it to pieces of, you know, plastic and stuff so that it doesn't go anywhere. Um, but I'd actually like to see a real Apple game controller, not, not use, you know, app, um, Microsoft's Xbox controller, which I understand you can pair. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you can pair the PS4 one, uh, but no. I, yeah. So th why don't we have an Apple branded game controller to, I think to go with Apple Arcade? Fantastic idea. Yeah. With Apple Arcade, this is subscription gaming service Apple launched. I guess in September, what is it, $5 a month for unlimited access to their games, not their games, but games that they've curated. Uh, it works on Apple TV, but there's third party controllers. The idea of an Apple designed gaming controller for the TV, which then also works with your Mac, which also works on your iPhone or your iPad is a tremendous idea. And I, I would love to see what Apple would do with a controller. Uh, outside of you know the third party options that are they're good we have a couple of them my kids use them they play roblox and you know they, they absolutely love them but they're not great they're pretty generic and, and what about a facetime camera yeah right as well. i mean why not you know? we're all doing this social distancing thing we don't know when things are going to truly get back to normal ha putting a camera somewhere in the controller in the box, well, even, even if, it, even it's, if you take the iPhone, you know, uh, uh, selfie camera, right. You put it in a housing that you can put on top of your monitor or, or let it sit on top of an Apple TV. Yeah. Uh, why doesn't Apple have its, have its own uh, webcam platform? It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. We have to depend on Logitech and, and other companies uh, for that. I'd like to see a webcam that actually had decent iOS and, 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 and Mac integration. Um, we don't have one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So one thing we didn't include on our list is Mac OS and that's just because it just yep. wasn't something we talked about, but you just brought up a good point. I would love to see in Mac OS that Apple enables using your iPhone as a webcam. Everyone has them. Yeah. You know, that would be very cool. Connect it via lightning. You have yep. power, you have bandwidth for data communication and you're able to use your iPhone and get a much improved picture and video quality with, out spinning anything that there's there's my that's my entire wish list for mac os iphone as a webcam nothing more sure sure absolutely yeah uh any closing thoughts about wwdc this year jason you know it's it will be apple's first large-scale virtual event so i mean i am of course interested in seeing um how they're going to be able to stream all this stuff and i mean we know we've seen them do the the, the 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 the, the main the main you stage know. event uh, you know for years that they've been able to done but for them to have an interactive event with with classrooms and 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 face to faces and stuff um, with the type with the number of people that are likely to show up to this thing will be very interesting yeah. uh, you know I work for an organization that's also working on virtual event platforms and stuff and it's a lot of logistics and complicated stuff that has to get done um, and this will be at a scale that is really unimaginable right you know one thing is if you're an organization with um you know a thousand people expected to attend an event or 500 people to expect to attend an event if you have tens of thousands of people expected to attend an event a major trade show like that or developers uh, who knows right so it'd, it'd be interesting to see how they handle be great just study case of how they implement it yeah it would be nice if they did a lessons learned afterwards right here's what we did here's what worked what didn't work and here's how uh not only we can improve in the future, but other companies can improve in the future. Because really, this is the first big scale digital only event we'll have seen since everything shut down, right? Yep. Google went to an online only uh, Google I.O. originally, and then they decided we're not even going to do I.O. this year. Right. Now, sometime in the near future, hopefully they're going to announce Android 11 with a video. Uh, but they're not going to do the developer stuff that Apple's planning on doing. And, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to Microsoft, see. How Microsoft did a virtual 
uh, event that was very, very big. But um, I, I think because we're talking about, you know, right. the popularity of these, these mobile devices and stuff, this could be even significantly bigger than that. Yeah, I agree. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I imagine Apple has some surprises for us. I would bet there's going to be some hardware. There's a lot of rumors heating up about hardware. Um, and then, you know, who knows what else we're going to see in iOS and iPad OS and all the other software that runs all of our, our gadgets. Um, but yeah, I look forward to watching it. And of course, we'll have more analysis after the event ends. And if the ARM processor uh, pathway is actually, you know, migration path is actually announced by Apple at the event, you can bet Jason and I are going to be talking about that. That'll be a major, major thing. I cannot wait to dive into it if it yeah. is announced. All right. I'm Jason Cipriani. And I'm Jason Perlow. And this is Jason Squared. Make sure to check out more of our work at ZDNet.com. Thank you.